Good morning, everyone. This is Mortgage Post 411. I'm Audrey Boisno with my co-host, Kevin Casey. And today we are joined by Miss Katie DeLasto. How are you doing this morning, Katie? Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. Oh, my goodness. There I don't think so everyone's many... celebrating Halloween today. Listen, there's plenty to be. I know um... a lot of real estate agents who are not celebrating it today. Why? Oh, but... Oh, okay. I can think of 1.785 billion reasons why they're not. Listen, just today. hang on. We're going to come back to that. Good God. Okay. So, um, so you know, every once in a while, you guys re might remember that I will bring up some random thing that comes out of nowhere, and you, um, and you're probably shaking your head, going, "Why in the hell is she saying this on this mortgage show?" And I do it because I'm random. But I have a couple of them today, and I'm doing it a couple of them because Katie is the person who gave me the calendar from which these little random things come. And I thought this was appropriate way to start the day. When you have to make a choice and every choice is a bad one, it's called a Zugswing, just so you know. Oh, wow. good, good, Zugs good. Wing. <laughs> when it's all, okay. Um, and, okay, I won't say the other one because it was a little, <clears throat> I'll go with raunchy i'll pass on racy, that racy, racy just want a little reminder last week we had brian stevens joining us he is always interesting well you think you never know what's going to come out of my mouth you never know it might fall out of his mouth so if you would like to see it it is on youtube mortgage pros 411 you can watch it on double speed just in case i don't talk fast enough and all of our other episodes are on there too or whatever we're calling this thing episode shows you know contributions to the world whatever um all right so kevin tomorrow november 1st what is that uh first day of november oh my god he... <laughs> okay tomorrow is the first day of our renewal period for nmls if you have not done your continuing ed for NMLS, if your fingerprints have not been re-upped, if you need a credit report, it's time to get on that, people. And if you are going to get on it, there is no better way than to go to Mortgage Educators and use the code COUNTDOWN and you'll get a big discount. So get on it. Tomorrow is the first day. Remember, we've been doing the countdown the last few weeks. It was a two weeks, one week. Tomorrow, can you believe it's November 1st tomorrow? Who oh, God, that's amazing. And, and wow. we're gonna do a little contest to see who can document that they renewed first. So if you are one of the first ones, you line up at 12.01 a.m. on November 1st to see if you can get yourself renewed, uh, let us know. Well, you know so, what, you might even do it at eight o'clock in the morning and be, all, be the first person to get the stuff into us. That would also work. Well, I don't think that people are exactly dying to spend their money this year. And if you're in California, it's 300 That's what I'm saying. I, I think if you got up at 8 o'clock in the morning, you'd still have a shot. You know, you might even have it if you did it at I, 12 o'clock. Because I, uh, I don't think everybody realizes that this year, a lot of people have been in the business for a long time. Their fingerprints have expired and they don't know it. Because if their broker or lender didn't notify them, um, when they go to renew, you'll be able to renew initially, but then your fingerprints are going to expire like mine did on the, in the middle of December. Um, well, if Kevin had followed the advice of mortgage educators, he would have already logged into his NMLS website and he would have gone to his resource center to confirm that your education requirement on your education rec record has a green check mark. That means it's compliant. A yellow would mean it's not and you're missing hours, I would imagine you would also see your fingerprints there. Because mm -hmm. I personally, yes, you would. I, I had got a green check. And uh, my well, fingerprints have not expired yet. That's okay. Oh, okay. This, you have a good point. Go ahead and share that. Yeah, Come the on. fingerprints, and that was a weird thing about it because I couldn't find it. I got a notice from my, my employer saying, hey, you have to have a new fingerprint background and all this other stuff, you know, because those fingerprints are always changing. And um, I actually went back to them and said, how, how do, I don't see this anywhere on the NMLS site. And they had to give me this whole procedure where you go. And then I realized why I wasn't seeing it because my fingerprints have not yet expired. They don't That's expire possible. until like 10 years from the date I, I got my fingerprints done. 
Okay. With that being said, last year when I needed to re-up mine, I got an email from NMLS and we discussed this at length, I think last week, maybe even the week before. And you get an email from NMLS. So 10 bucks says it's somewhere in one of Kevin's many emails and uh, he missed it. Just like me, I miss more emails than I read probably. So let's move it along, shall we? It is a big week in mortgages or mortgage information. We have MBA mortgage apps tomorrow, ADP, manufacturing, the JOLT report. You remember last month with the JOLT report where it said we have 8 bazillion jobs and it rocked everyone's world. Then just in case that isn't enough, we have the Fed's uh, decision on whether going to, they're going to hike, pause, whatever rates tomorrow. So hang on people. It's a big volatile week. Uh, we also have initial jobs week. I mean, it just goes on and on this week. So if you so, see, Audrey, what do you like, think? lock it in. What? Audrey, what do you think? Increase, pause, skip, decrease. I don't think they should the rate again. I mean, my God, I, they've done enough damage. Thanks for asking. Um, so what do you think? I say it's a pause. I, in fact, I'd be surprised they raise them ever again. Well, I mean, there yeah. is a big push right now. They're saying that there was, there's somebody who is saying Janet Yellen, who's our treasury sec secretary, that she's it, she made the biggest blunder since Andrew Jackson with what they did with the whole rate, you know, environment. And anyway, so yeah, it's I not. I read an interesting article about some today. Um, and I didn't agree with most of this thing, but the one thing he did say was he felt that interest rates right now are actually contributing to inflation. Yes, 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 hello. Yeah. Definitely 100% on every possible level. But also, again, some of the things that, well, anyway, yes, agree 100%. Um, uh, so Jeff made the comment that he would like to re-up and renew early um, if the prize is a trip to Hawaii. So since Katie lives in Hawaii, what do you think, Katie? You up for that? Hey, yeah, all, all, all for it. You know, all, we always we need more visitors to come spend their money in Hawaii. So please well, they, do. I think what they're saying is they'd like you to send them a ticket and they'd like to stay in your oh, room. Oh, oh, so oh. Um, not that, no? Okay. No, no, all right, no. moving right along. Katie, let's Hi. talk about... Let's talk about what's going on. And let's actually start with what Kevin was mentioning, because it is big news right now. So we big, talked big. about- I mean, 1.7 billion. billion. I mean, that's okay. pretty darn big. Okay. So Kevin is talking about the NAR, Home Services of America and Keller Williams uh, lawsuit that alleged that they were colluding to inflate and maintain their high commissions and rates Not through- anymore. Clear clear cooperation rule. It was the Sitzer Burnett buyer broker commissioner law commission lawsuit. And to Kevin's point, he said it 45 times already, $1.78 billion in uh, um, damages that were awarded because they did have a guilty verdict this morning, I guess this morning. So with all that being said, just a reminder, we had kind of had part of this conversation last week when we were talking about it, where, I mean, we need buyer's agents it's we're going to still need, have them they need to get paid someone's going to need to pay them so yeah. you know everything i think will work itself out um it's just a function yeah, of what it's going to look like what it's going to do to keller williams and nar and um so i don't know thoughts kids well, I guess my, I mean, again, I'm not a legal expert. I know nobody from NAR has called me to ask me my opinion or what they should do. So let's just be really well. This is a, a little bit, I feel somebody's, yeah. you know, that this is like asking me what the 49ers need to do with their quarterback situation. So I still, I have no influence on that either. Um, and so it, it's, um, I think what we need to, to pay attention to is sometimes in lawsuits, the, Sometimes the jury will award a certain amount of money, but then they come back and like, well, that's nice that you wanted, you know, 1.78 billion, but what's actually going to be awarded, you know, may, there may be something else. So there, there's usually some fallout with something when these big giant numbers come out, that's not actually what ends up happening. And mm -hmm. so, we'll, we'll, you know, so we can see a little bit of that happening. Um, and ultimately, this is what I've always said about real estate. I was a business major. We, we live in a free market economy. The real estate market is the most purest form of supply and demand on the planet. It is just how it works. It is supply and demand. When we have a low, you know, when we have a high demand and low supply, prices go up and the inverse is true. This is basic economics. 
So with it comes to buyer's age, you're going to have the same thing. What's the competitive advantage? Sellers ultimately get to decide how they want their house to be sold. It's not a big deal. So if, if, if as realtors, we are having conversations with our sellers and saying, look, the value of paying a buyer's agent is that they're bringing well-qualified people that are ready, willing, and able with that, that are willing to close a transaction. This is why we want to include this in an offering and explain what it means. And, you know, because the real estate contract isn't long enough, I'm sure there'll be more disclosures. Hooray. Who wants more I know. disclosures? Um, well, and you know, to more. recap, I oh. mean, commissions have always been negotiable. Yeah, no, well, always, wait, not, not always. always will be. Back in the day. But in the contract, in the in the car contract, they're negotiable now, today. You see it all the time. So yep. again, I mean, it was it'll be interesting to see how the breakdown of that those damages, you know, who got what portion of it, and then how that works out. I think ultimately, to your point, we need real we need buyer's agents. And we don't need more dual agency. To Jill's point, Jill made the comment, the next step will be a lot more dual agency, which serves neither the seller nor the buyer adequately, then there will be another lawsuit. And I couldn't agree more. Like it is, um, yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of <laughs> realtors that there. actually won't do it. They won't be, I mean, dual, dual agency. Okay. Dual agency is different than double ending, right? Okay. So dual, dual agency doesn't bother me at all. Dual agency means it's like, so for example, I mean, like, EXP is one brokerage for the state of California. So, I mean, you could have a, a listing agent that is separate from a buyer's agent. They It's technically dual agency because it's the same broker, a broker. Not the same realtor. I Correct. think you have the, the double ending. I know realtors that will never do double end a transaction because they don't believe you can serve two masters. And yeah. like, hey, I'll find right. somebody else in my office. Yes, it's dual agency. And it's also the buyer is getting their own representation. The seller is getting their own representation. So dual agency is not, I don't believe it's, it's never been an issue. It's around the, the agency relationship of an individual realtor has with their client, whether that's the buyer or the seller. I agree. I, I, yeah, my top realtors, they would never double end a deal. Uh, it's it's, it's always it's always the shady ones that are always happy to double end a deal. Okay, be careful. We can't like say every deal that's double ended. That's is true. No, I get it. Come on. But with that we being can, said, but it may not be true, but we can say it. It doesn't have to be true. I mean, yeah. is it, can, okay, we actually Irish. tried to. We He's tried Irish. To Don't let the facts get away of a good story. Come on now. That's how us uh, Irish people talk. We, we should yeah. know these things. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, so it is it not. This doesn't pass my sniff test. Just leave, leave it at that. Well, I think well, that I think. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry, God. You go, and I, I it's it's in my head. I, it's not going anywhere. Go ahead, you first. No, no, you first, Katie. You're oh, our boy. guest. I'm being well, polite. Well, because we are we are talking as a mortgage. You know, this is a a mortgage pros. Um, we've seen this happen. The same thing where you know, and just now the feds have made it legal and okay for you to be able to do the more to to be able to sell mortgages and sell real estate. That you can mm -hmm. you can actually do both. And it's frowned upon to be both the buyer's agent and the mortgage person on the same transaction because that's, to me, that's begging for a lawsuit. And yeah, it's because so, you have too much control. Of well, the and client. it's the same thing if you're representing both the buyer and the seller as a realtor, it's just asking yep. for a lawsuit. And let's just be really real about this. California is the most litigious state in the union and the United States is the most litigious country in the world. So do the math. I'm, I'm in California. So, you know, yeah, like and in the Bay area is the most litigious part of the entire California. So there's more it's, attorneys it's the here the entire than galaxy. It's just, let's just cover the entire galaxy. Cause if Cali if the San Francisco Bay area is the most litigious area of California and California is the most litigious state in the union and the United States is the most litigious country in the world, we are standing right now in the most litigious part of the universe and known world. So there you so go. For the people who are listening in other parts of the country, <laughs> feel happy right now that you're not at least at ground zero of litigation central. Um, and since, I don't know, 27,000 minutes ago when um, Katie mentioned the San Francisco 49ers, I was happy because I've been wanting to say this for a few weeks. So Sarah, uh, there is this headline that I, that somebody sent me the other, uh, not too long ago. San Francisco is so expensive that Brock Purdy has a roommate. So he's number 13 on the 49ers and 
he is um he is highly paid how much does he pay eight hundred seventy thousand dollars a year okay i'm just gonna say if you're making 870 a year having a roommate is a choice but yeah he still drives a Toyota Sequoia and he has a roommate in San Francisco. Well, if you understand uh, football no, contracts, you would understand that, yes, he makes 800000 a year, but that's divided by the number of games he plays of 16. And if he doesn't finish the season, he's to get injured. A lot of football contracts, I don't know about his personally, but a lot of football contracts stop paying you. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why football players uh, make what they make um, – because they have to, because it's only on a game by game basis, not on a. We could make this a whole conversation about professional athletes and the abundance of money and uh, and money that they think Perfect. is coming that's not actually coming. This is where mortgage professionals can help people who who are mm -hmm. you know making a lot of money, got a big promotion where they doubled or tripled their income, and you want to help them make good financial decisions. Because and one thing yes. Brock Purdy was literally the last draft pick. The final draft pick of the entire draft the year he was drafted so he's smart enough to know this may or may not last so i'm going to be smart about my money and i'm going to keep mm -hmm. driving the car i've been driving that works perfectly well and maybe he has a roommate because he's got you know a dog and somebody can take care of his dog when he's traveling to other parts of the country to play professional football i don't know why he has a roommate but like you said it could be a choice and yeah. this is what happens a lot we see these professional athletes that suddenly they fall into millions of dollars and they have no idea how to handle the money. And one of the first things they buy, they buy the car, then they buy the house. And so. Yeah. This is an and, I, and if you've ever been a loan officer for an NFL player, you've seen these contracts are quite extensive. And yeah. as you read through them, you, you realize, wait a minute, there's no guarantee in this. Uh -uh. They, they could be out of a job next week. Mm -hmm. Well, often they buy the chick, then they buy the house, then they buy yeah. the car. Now go for the basketball car, players. The chick, the house probably is the order. But anyway, all right, moving right along. Our title today was Fundamentals, Katie. Fundamentals. Uh, speaking of football. <laughs> you know, not everybody, exactly speaking of football, not everybody has a ton of business right now. And so, you know, is now the time to take a lot of time off and twiddle your thumbs and hope that the rates come back? and pray for more inventory oh, or or is there something else we could be doing you just say that just to make me mad didn't you you just said that just to rile me up you know i i i you know i could cast a you spell know how often you know. i hear people say oh my god when the rates come back i'm like people stop it you need stop to it. stop it stop it now do you have your yeah. wand i don't have my wand with me today it's in my other car i didn't even think about that actually i do have a wand but i didn't bring it I'm, for those of you that are Harry Potter fans, I'm a Slytherin. Um, that shocks no one who knows me. Um, it does that, not shock that me. Is not shock that is not shocking. There's no any way to perform. Like, of course you're a Slytherin. Wow. I mean, okay. Duh. Um, so, uh, okay. And I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. Go figure. All right. Fundamentals, Katie. Focus. Okay. <laughs> so I actually did a video about this last week. So those of you that follow me on social media, I do a, a video once a week. Um, and last week I was actually angry because I am a sports fan. Um, and, uh, I watch a lot of baseball and football. My son plays college baseball. And for those of you that are not sports fans, it doesn't matter if you are a professional in anything. So you think about professional dancers, speakers, yoga instructors, um, athletes, uh, you are a, an attorney, whatever, whatever the profession where they are high level professionals they have mastered the fundamentals it's and and to use a sports analogy if if you learn how to block and tackle as a seven-year-old in peewee football you get better and better and better and better at blocking and tackling and that's what they are experts at unless you play for the raiders um, then uh, then you're not an expert at blocking and tackling. Sorry, that's actually what got me angry because I was watching them not tackle people and I was yelling at the TV. I was like, come on, this is a fundamental thing, like blocking and tackling. Baseball players, we're watching the playoffs, the World Series is going on. The basics of how you field a ball, how you catch a ball, how you hit the ball, how you, the really simple things that now for this level of professionalism in sports becomes un unconscious. It's part of your subconscious mind. Your brain just knows what to do. Um, there's a whole, if you start thinking while you're doing this stuff, it means you haven't mastered it yet. Uh, Bruce yeah. Lee would talk about, I'm not afraid of the man who knows 10,000 punches. I'm afraid of the man who know, who has practiced one punch 10,000 times. 
right? Somebody who has mastered the fight. Ballerinas, right? The, they know yeah, all, okay. they know all the things. So what is music. this thing? Music, Katie. Music. I, I'm a musician. I'm terrible at karaoke because I have to master something. So I can't just like get up there and wing it. Not great at jazz improv because I was a classical musician. It's all about technique and precision and and doing scales and doing fat, practicing different phrases over and over again till it's in your fingers to the point where three million years later, I can still pick up my violin, play something and it's in my fingers. I don't have to think about it. So about whatever it. we do, including mortgages, we must master it. All right, keep it. So keep what going. I wanna know is for all of you that have been in the business for more than two years, that what was the one thing, and you can put this in the chat and then I don't have my glasses. So you're going to have, I mean, I do have my glasses, but I don't want to look like a librarian when I have to stare at the Zoom. So you help me with this. Um, as people put in the chat, what was the one or two things that you did to be successful as a brand new loan officer? Bueller. All right, you can tell Come me what you in the chat. Refund, you guys? yep. Kevin, or there we go. calling realtors, answering the phone. Although now we're afraid to answer the phone because of all the spam and, and what is no, it? No, is stop, it just, just stop saying that. Stop saying that. Stop. Answered my phone. Still. Oh, open houses, caravan meetings. That dial was. for doctors. Returning phone calls. There's a good one. Market to the database. Keep marketing, engaging with your past clients. All good, great suggestions. Thanks, guys. When, when These are camp meetings, social medias. Well, and I think by going to camp meetings, what they're saying is you're networking and and it's like we do here. Learning everything. from sure. your peers. Yep, being around your peers. What is it that? The, what is my, it that? My big thing is I joined. Uh, I joined Toastmasters. One of the first things I did when I got earlier. Really? I was deathly afraid of public speaking. Um, and I, I just got up this uh, weekend and spoke in front of a thousand people and no problem at all. Wasn't even, didn't right. even think twice about it. Right. Um, so. Okay. Jeff is saying calling, calling people on their birthdays. I mean, really good ideas here. Really good ideas. And these are all fundamentals. So here's the thing. People talk a lot about, let's go back to the fundamentals. And my question to you is that if you're a professional, why did you ever leave them? Why do you have to right. go back to them, right? If you're a professional in anything of what you do, you are doing it every single day. So if, if you go, for those of you that have an iPhone, if you go look right now into your iPhone, you go open up your phone. And yes, I'm telling you to open your phone and open up your contact. And on the far side, it'll have A through Z. And then underneath Z is a pound sign or hashtag, whatever you want to call it. And click on that hashtag and scroll all the way to the bottom where it tells you how many contacts you have. All the way to the bottom. I have 6,028 contacts in my wow. hospital phone. See how to do that? Yep. Okay. 3626, God, that's daunting. <laughs> oh, it's gonna get worse, just wait. Kevin, how many you have? 3,079. Okay. So you guys have about- Oh, each sorry. About 40 45, 35. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong okay. thing. Okay. Do you have a giant tip? So all of you that have more than a thousand names in your phone, which I imagine is most of you, when's the last time you called these thousands of people? All of them yesterday, I swear. Yeah, mm -hmm. all of them yesterday. Okay, so this is what I'm going to tell you to do. I want you to go, you can go if you have an, you know, I, it doesn't matter if you have a Google phone or an iPhone, go to where you, if you log in to, um, to your iTunes account or you know your your Google or your Apple login or your Google, you can go to your contacts and start with printing out everybody who has a last name that begins with the letter A and print them out and stick them in your phone, stick them on the front seat of your car. And every time you're in a red light, look down at the name. And because it's in your phone, you can voice dial. You don't have to touch anything. Just look over at a stoplight, look at the next name on the list and make the phone call. And if they, if you haven't talked to them in like two years, five years, 10 years, here's what, your relationship doesn't get any worse. You don't have one. 
right? So you can't make it worse because you don't have a relationship with these people. And you can call and say that, hey, my apologies. I haven't done a great job of catching up. It's been, you know, since the pandemic or what have you. And I wanted to circle back with you, just touch base. And have you done an annual mortgage review this year? I'd love to schedule that with you. Now, annual mortgage review is not just their mortgage. It's asking them the same questions you'd ask anybody else. What other debts do you have? I'm hearing a lot of loan yep. officers tell me that they're helping people get rid of credit card debt or some other yep. debt that is not, yes, they're, yes, they're getting rid of their 3% or their 4% interest rate, but their monthly payment actually goes down when you combine everything into a higher rate because it's a, it's amortized over 30 years. That 25% interest rate. We've talked about that a lot on here, a lot. Okay, good. Yep. So these are the questions good. to have. It's also to have conversation with people. Now, talk to people about, if you if your company or you do reverse mortgage, reverse for purchase is the greatest listing tool I've ever seen in my life. And if you're talking about, hey, do you have any family members that are in a two-story home that haven't that haven't been upstairs in over a year or two years or five years because they converted the dining room into a bedroom because they can't go upstairs and they're afraid to have those kinds of conversations. Talk to people about time of their life. Here's the here's my major soapbox issue. Everybody get your pencil. Ready? 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 People buy and sell real estate because of time of their life, not timing the market. Yep. Right. Well, they should be. It's it's remarkable, the people, the conversations. So we have to shift that. We have to shift the narrative because what's being driven down their throats is, oh, it's bad. You have to wait. And we know that's not true. We talk about it every week that I, I it's not going to get better. Story, yes, great story yesterday from um, talking to somebody and they, all they want to know is what their house is worth. Um, they're having a meet with the financial planner doing some retirement planning and, you know, they're five years out. And I just said, well, let me pull up some comps for you and I'll give you the addresses. And I'll, you check these out. This, these homes sold in your neighborhood. They're about the same size. These are your comparable sales. And what I ended up getting out of it was surprised me. It's like, wait a minute. If we put in a hundred thousand dollars into our house, it'll be worth two hundred thousand dollars more compared to what what these homes have done that are selling for more than the other homes that are just like ours. And it's like, uh, wait a minute, we need to get a hundred thousand dollars so we can fix up our house. I'm like, oh, well, there we go. I can help you with that. Magic. Bingo. And the other okay. one I do, uh, Katie, is. Uh, I don't know about you, you, but you ever call, say, hey, Siri, I don't know if you have an Apple phone. Oh, I, oop, there goes my phone. I was going to say, you're Yeah, 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 yeah. Every I'm probably sending everybody else's phone. But you yes, say, you say those good. magic words, and then you say, call so-and-so, okay? Yep. And how many times does Miss Siri call the wrong person? Yep. Okay? Don't hang up. Nope. It is serendipity who you just got to call it's somebody that's in your contact database and you say hey not calling for anything actually siri just made the day but while i have you how's life going what's going on in your world and i've gotten referrals out of this it's crazy yep, yep. the the best answer i've gotten from people when i call i've been calling people um that i haven't spoken to in seven to ten years and they answer the phone with oh my god a blast from the past how yep. the hell are you yeah, and it's hilarious. It and is. I'm like, really oh funny. my gosh, thank you. Like, thank you. Because like, look, they could have called you too. They haven't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's okay. The phone dials both ways. It does. So call. So my number one thing is, and you guys have put this in the chat, calling your database. You have yeah. no idea what's going on in other people's lives until you ask and you show them that you care. Now, most people meet with their financial advisor once a year and their CPA once a year. Are they meeting with their mortgage professional once a year to discuss their largest financial investment of their lives? The no. largest gener gener largest indicator of generational wealth is a home ownership. What, sorry, I can't say this on a recording. <laughs> like, why aren't we doing this as an industry? So the second, so that's my number one thing. Print out your database, one last name at a time. So start with the, literally start with the A's. And every red light, I would like to, I would just like to make a, a plea for people to track it too. We had somebody on, uh, Goran, who has CR, um, Cimarron software, and he was, he's a real teacher of make sure you're tracking your activities so that you know, okay, I left a message for so and so on this date. 
And then I call back on this date or I had this conversation and, and then schedule your follow-up date. Like, when are you going to talk to him again? Maybe it's in a year, maybe it's in five years, whatever, but maybe, yeah, I can't see. I guess my, my list of people I called that day. Holy wow. smokes. How many are on there? 32. But you're on there six Incredible. times, Audrey. What? I said you're on, on there six, six times. times. I know. Well, Jeff put in the in the chat that he found his contacts. He has 9,056. I don't think I'm one of them. So I don't know who oh. he's talking to. <laughs> 9,056. That is a lot of bodies. So, yeah. so, I mean, here's the thing. People are like, look, you guys, most of you have a CRM. If you don't, it's called Google Sheet. Right. So this is literally what I, I, I write, like while I'm in, the, like in the car, right. You know, like at the red light, when you get to the destination, make the note, you know, LM is left message. When you get back at the end of the day, put on your fuzzy slippers and I pull up my Google sheet and I put the name in, I put the next, I'm going to, you know, I, I put it a note. I put it I, so I can sort everything by date. The next time I'm going to call them again in a week, or I'm going to call them again in a month. So maybe the next time I'm going to call them is December 1st. I put the notes, left a message on, October 31st, wish them happy Halloween. So, and then, and then I sort every day, I take my Google sheet and I sort it by date. And even if that date is a date, I booked an appointment because I knows that I'm going to be, I'm going to be typing in something about them that day. So that when I scroll open and then use a contact management system, I'm, I'm in the process of converting into a different contact management system, but I'm like, I got to have something that I'm tracking. And so for me, I use a Google sheet, just keep it simple. And, tell, and then it's also easy for me to, when I need to upload all this data into my contact management system, it's in a, a format that's easy to convert, which is an Excel sheet or a Google sheet or something like that. Well, so Jeff said that in 26 of do, years of doing it, he has conducted 115 homebuyer seminars that's gotten him to that 9,056 number in his contacts. I mean, homebuyer, home, homebuyer con I can't say that. What is it? Home buyer seminars. There we Home go. So I mean, we're still have a that's a great shortage, idea. Guys. You we're know, still have a housing um, shortage. I, I remember going to a conference one time and they broke us all up into tables. And then they uh they did things like you what you just did. Okay, everybody take out their phone, open up their contacts, go down the very bottom and find out how many contacts you have. And then what they did was whoever had the most contacts would share their story <clears throat> about how they had the most contacts. It was the greatest little exercise. And then they, you know, did another one like, okay, who closed the most loans this month? And then that person, you know, would talk about that. But it's it's always good if you're talking to, you know, another professional in your field, just, you know, hey, what are you doing to get more contacts? What are you doing to close more loans? What are you doing to get more buyers? What are you doing to get more realtors? All those, you know, talk to the guys that are doing it every day. Um, you know, we notice here right now, people are, that are doing it. They're doing it every day. Jill, you know, five realtors a day, every day. Yeah. And she texts first and she sends handwritten notes too. She follows Joe Stumps. Um, and if you thought he was gone, he's not. So he, she follows his method, which is text first, then call send, and follow up with handwritten notes. It's very hands-on. And, and it's interesting because I, um, uh, my husband came home and handed me a phone number and a name the other day and said, Hey, my coworker's 19 year old wants to be a realtor. Can you call him? I'm like, okay. So I texted, I called, he's 19 years old. And I, so he reminds me of my kids. And so I said, let's get together for coffee or something. And I said, do you know why I'm trying, I'm asking if you want to get together? You know, it's because those personal relationships are so important and knowing someone in, and you connect better that way. And it's something that we've, a lot of people have gotten away from since we went into lockdown is they got very comfortable in their own home, in their environment. They don't leave very much. They don't go to an office where the, I mean, again, I can get rid, rid of a few more of my little pile of ideas for things to talk about. If I say this. They're showing that the productivity, if you are working out of an office, is higher. It is just a fact. And so connection, productivity, all of that comes from energy of other people. So get out there, get into the world, right, Katie? Last yep. time you were here, you gave us a list of what, 100, 100 ways to generate business. 100. Remember that? Yep. It's a contact it's sport, be on our guys. It's a contact sport. So this is a, a sales of the contact sport. 
So the first thing that's a fundamental is call the people that you already know. They're in your phone. Even if you only met them once, you still have their number. Give them a call. Worst mm -hmm. case scenario, they answer the phone. And they say, who is this? Okay. Well, maybe you can take them out of your phone or out of your database. But I think you'll get a lot more. Oh, my gosh. So great to hear from you. So cool to see your name pop up on my phone. Um, those are really fun right. conversations. And and I was going to say, book an appointment. Hey, I need to come by your house. I want to do an annual mortgage review. I want to give, you know, uh, I would like to give you a, a ballpark based on some comps. Or if you want to bring a realtor with you that would can come in and give them ideas on what they can do. What are some simple things they could do to increase the value of their home and still enjoy why they're living there? Not getting yeah. it ready to sell, but still add value. And at the same time, yeah. and add enjoyment to, to their home. Also, I, I, this is frankly the same conversation I'm having with realtors. Go do a walkthrough of somebody's house as if you were walking through in a listing appointment and notice things like dry rot, leaky faucets, like things that, you know, that are, we, we call them deferred maintenance things, right? That people are like, eh, it's not that big of a deal. We'll get to it later. Well, later is going to go up in price yeah. and it's going to get more and more expensive. And if it continues, something like dry rot continues over time, it becomes it can become really expensive because significant damage has been done to the home. Again, this is the largest financial asset of most people's lives. What are they doing to take care of this asset that maybe they don't even aware of as a thing? I mean, it's, you know, I, my, I was at my sister's house up in Folsom and I noticed that there was some, you know, around the bathtub when my niece was little and they were, you know, bathing her and there's a lot of water coming out. Well, there was, I'm like, Hey, here's some, you pay attention to this water damage over here. You might want to jump on it now versus waiting three, four, five years down the road when it's now gotten significantly worse. And then you got to replace all the drywall versus just replacing a baseboard, right? So it, it's, um, you know, these are the kinds of conversations you can be having with people. And then you show them your value and then tell them what you're looking for. Hey, right now, the people I'm working for, right, working with right now are people that have a lot of credit card debt or people that are have a job transfer or people that are pregnant with multiples because that one bedroom condo is not going to work when the triplets are coming. Right. So, you know, so give people scenarios just like we just did just now. If if you say to me, do you know somebody that's thinking about buying or selling real estate or thinking about refinancing? Give me a call. I have six thousand names in my phone. It's going to take me a while to do the brain filter on that one. Right. But if you say, do you know anybody that's pregnant, that's recently retired, that wants to live closer to the grandkids? Then I got now suddenly the, the filter in my brain can get you some names a lot faster. So give people that filter so that they, when they meet that person, like, oh my gosh, I know who you need to talk to, right? Yeah. So, and, it, and, 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 they, and they know it, not only they know it, but they're like, wait, how did you know I needed that person? Um, they're like, how did you know I needed to talk to a mortgage? How did you know I was, I, one of the things I've taught people to do is when you hear like you're in a party situation, you know, people don't come up to our contacts and say, hey, I'm paying uh, X, Y, Z in interest rate. Do you think I, sh I should refinance right now? It just doesn't happen to them, right? It does to us because we're in the industry and people, oh, you're a mortgage person. What do you think of my interest rate? Or or do you think it's a good time to buy or sell? But you know, other people don't get that conversation. But what they do get is, hey, I just got a pay raise or I just got that promotion or I just got the new job. And I have taught a lot of my contacts to, to say, oh, I bet you're thinking about buying a house. And they're like, yeah, how'd you know? Because right. they are. They just got that real big job, right? They go, you need to talk to my guy. He will coach you on how to buy that house. And then next thing I'm getting a phone call. Yep. 100%. 100%. All right. So that's the first thing is call your database, book appointments, book appointments, book appointments. Second thing that's fundamentals that is one of my other soapboxes. And I know I've talked about this before. This is just a reminder. When somebody asks you what are rates or how's the market, it is the international sign for book an appointment. Book an appointment. Don't say anything silly. Say, let's get together and talk about it. So we're I think we've talked about being in San Francisco. And I think you know, people have heard about the Mark Twain's quote, right? The coldest winter I ever spent was a summer in San Francisco. Nobody ever asks you what's the average temperature of the San Francisco Bay Area because it doesn't exist. I mean, right. statistically it exists, statistically it ex exists, but you could be in San Francisco and have it be 60 degrees, drive 20 miles east, 20 miles, not Mars, 
20 miles east and it'll be 100 degrees in Walnut Creek. All right. This happens all the time in the San Francisco Bay Area. All the time. Asking you, what is the average temperature in December for the United States? Cold. Not in Hawaii. It's not. I, it, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. Where, does, wait, what It matters. Where are you going to be? Right? Yeah, you're right. So when somebody asks you, how's the market or what are rates? It depends because it does. It depends. Yep. Are it depends. Bonding? That is literally, that's everything in our business. What would the rate be? It depends. depends. What would, my, I, everything depends. It depends. Everything depends. So we say things like, oh, rate, I, the number of professionals in our business that are talking about rates being high makes me want to vomit. Like, no, they're not at 18%. When they're at 18%, then I will say they're high. They're not even double digits. Everybody breathe. It's okay. Right. It's like, just yeah. remember, we had the interest, those really crazy low interest rates were to help stimulate an economy in the middle of an international pandemic. It was a global pandemic. Raise your hand if you want to go through that again. Well, and now they're saying that it was, I mean, it was a huge mistake. Having the interest rates be that low, I mean, I don't think any of us would go back to that, would we? Because we know that it impacts your market for years to come. So the right, people who are opportunists come into the market, they close all the easy loans. We are left at the end trying to have a profession still. And, and it's all so difficult. So no, I would never... And that was a mistake. I'm sorry it ever happened. Come on. So, so let me yeah, ask, let me, get over do it. I have, do, do I have permission to challenge your thinking, Audrey? Yeah, yes, always. <laughs> okay. It's not difficult. This is when professionals rise to the top. This market Absolutely. is the market where we get to show people how good we are and why they yes. need to be meeting with us once a year and why we need to be talking about not just, it's not about, the conversation is never about your interest rate. It's about your overall financial health. We are here to talk to you about, it. that's why we collaborate with CPAs and financial planners and realtors is because those of us in the mortgage industry have learned that there's a collaboration to help you create healthy, healthy financial future. That's, you know, that's one of the reasons why Dave Savage started Mortgage Coach. He was like, I, I wanna help people understand all the different aspects of their financial future that includes a mortgage. What does it look like? What are the different things you can do? So when somebody asks you, how's the market or what are rates? This is the opportunity to show your value. If so, oh, I'm never getting rid of this 3%. Well, never is a long time. Yeah. And so let's sit down and talk about what are you looking to do? Hey, okay, did you know that you know since you have your 3%, what are some other things you can do? Oh, you're over the age of 70. Have you thought about a reverse mortgage? I mean, I don't know. We don't know what's going on in these people's lives. We have no idea that they're trying to help a grandkid get to medical school. I, I have no idea. And, and neither do we. So when somebody says, how's the market or what are rates, book an appointment. Mm -hmm. Even if they're saying, you know, I, I'm just curious. Of course, you're just curious. I'm sure it's about your own home or somebody that's important to you. So let's sit down and talk about it. They just had a niece, a nephew, a daughter, a son get married and they're like, do we buy an, do we, do we buy a condo or do we just rent for the next few years? We don't know what to do, right? Cause you're not an expert. You guys that are listening, you are the experts, show them your value and you will get referrals in droves. Now the, so the idea is that I just want every time and realtors, the same thing. If you are talking to your realtors and I've done this, this exercise before the lost leads conversation, how many times a week does somebody ask a realtor, how's the market? If every time somebody is asking a realtor that you work with, how's the market? Your realtor sends a text to you or a group text, a text to you and the person that asked how's the market and say, hey, I just ran in to Audrey at the supermarket. She, uh, she, she, it's, it's time for her to have a, a mortgage review. She hasn't had one in a couple years. Please give her a call. Now you and a realtor are both in relationship and connecting with somebody that they ran into at the grocery store who may or may not need to work your services today but they will absolutely need to use their services at some point in the future and will likely know other people that will as well. So get into relationship with these people. And you had, look, you guys use your databases way more than realtors do on average. I mean, there are some- Do we? Yeah, well, yeah, you use them more than realtors do. Your login That's rate is significantly advice. higher, significantly <laughs> higher than realtors, which we won't right. go there. Um, 
So, and then the third piece of the fundamentals, I have a three-pronged approach today because um, I'm Slytherin. Um, the third piece is this is the holidays, right? And the holiday season begun today. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. So with it being the holidays, some people are going to a Halloween party tonight. A friend of mine that's going to two or three tonight. At every single party you go to from now through New Year's Day, be purposeful about what you're doing. So you may decide at every party, I'm going to meet five new people. And once I get exchanged five, five business cards, get five new text messages, you know, text my info to, to five different people, five new contacts into your phone, or at least into your pocket if they're business cards, and then enjoy the party. Have a good time. I'm not telling you to spend the whole party working. I'm saying be purposeful about doubling or some people can triple their database. And if you just go to parties and exchange information, go to the chamber mixers, go to any party that you get invited to this year, go, Absolutely. go, 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 and be purposeful of how many new people you're going to meet or say, Hey, at this event, I want to make sure to go find a financial planner or an attorney, or who do you want to meet that you need to add into your database that you don't, I need to find a handyman, a dog walker. I don't care. But go and find whatever people you want to go find and just massively take this time to build momentum. And then remember, anybody at these parties that asks you, how's the market or what a rate, book an appointment. You're not going to do it over the second cocktail about let's discuss your interest rates. And how are those alimony payments coming for you? No, we're not doing that at a party. That's weird, right? But we're going to book an appointment and talk to them about what's going on with their overall financial health. Because if this is the largest indicator of your financial health, Let's make sure that you're healthy and that there's other pieces of it too, right? It's So we want to have those things. So go out to parties and engage and work. And if you're somebody who hates parties, go and get your five names and then leave. Do the Irish goodbye, right? So I don't know if anybody's familiar with the Irish goodbye. It just means suddenly you're not there anymore. They're just, oh, yeah. I hate it when people do that. <laughs> hey, um, I'll share with you my, uh, my November ask. Uh, and it goes with for Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving's come up in three weeks. And so I ask, so what are you doing for Thanksgiving? Oh, we are getting together with family at this house or we're having people over at our house. And I go, hey, I'm looking for someone that's going to be at your dining room table on Thanksgiving that wants to have Thanksgiving at their place, but they don't have a dining room table at this point because they don't have a dining room. So if you know, if you ask around, look around that person at the dining room table on Thanksgiving, and find the person I can help so they can host Thanksgiving next year. Let me and make that introduction. It's It's been great. It just it kind of opens up the thing. Like, oh yeah, you've got to talk to Kevin. He can help you buy a house. So next Thanksgiving, you can have it at your house. Oh, next Thanksgiving. That makes so much more yeah. sense than uh -huh. in three weeks. Okay. You know, it takes about a year to get the house, right? You got to get it lined up and pre-approved. And they right. once they buy the house in the summer, they got to fix it up in time for Thanksgiving next year. It's a whole then process. You to, then you have to chant with the shaman so that you can align the universe and get your offer accepted. So, uh -huh. yeah. It, it, yeah. I, this is, this is the best time here at my real thing. You know, Christmas, you know, hey, who wants to have, uh, you know, the holidays at their house? You know, same question. Hey, you know what? There are people out there. This is where you call your CPAs this time of year. What clients did you advise that they need the tax write-off of, of mortgage interest that they haven't bought yet this year? Because I we need to get we need this is, this is a great time of year. I love buying real estate this time of year. Love it, love yeah. it, love it, love it, love it. That's the best time to buy. October, yeah. November, the best. The fourth quarter well, and and again, again, January. Just, it's awesome. I have a client who just put an offer in two days ago, five offers on this thing and two of them were all cash. And so it's, and while we're at it, home price appreciation continues to go up kids, even in this market. And we think, I mean, at this point, we've been saying it's between five and 9% for 2023. We're now at six to 9% for 2023. And those numbers may go up in the next couple of months because it's yep. been a really Hot, hot year. So all five indexes, CoreLogic, Case Shiller, FHFA, Zillow, Black Knight, all of them are showing positive appreciation for 2023 and into 2024. It's not going to get better with the kind of demand we have. Hmm. So we need to get people into places now and and shift their thinking that they're going to wait for the rates to come down. I got, I I have to resist my, I have to sit on my hands, to not slap someone every time they go, well, I'm waiting for the rates to come down. I'm like, I am going to kill you. I mean, I know that's, you know, less I'm than. I'm waiting for unicorns. Yeah, let's kill somebody. I'm pretty sure. 
Well, here, oh here's the God. thing. Here's this is now I'm aggressive. No kidding. Direct. I know weird. And you make me look meek and mild. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. The two things about anybody that's renting. What is the appreciation that you're getting on your apartment or house that you're renting? What appreciation are you getting off that? Yep. Which we know that's zero, right? Zero. Zero. Uh, two, what is an interest rate on rent? A thousand percent. hundred percent. It's a hundred percent. So uh, eight looks really good compared to a hundred, right? I mean, it's a hundred percent interest rate. That's what you're paying. So, I mean, if somebody says I'm waiting for interest rates to drop, so like, well, you're at a hundred now, what's less than a hundred? Right. I know. I, mean, I know. That's, now I'm obnoxious and direct, so that might not work for everybody. It just might be that it just helped them change their thinking about what they're doing. Um, and I always say that I always laugh at people like, so let's just say a 5%, right? So if you buy a $500,000 condo and it goes and you put 5% down, right? That's $25,000 and it appreciates $25,000 in a year, you get a 100% return on investment in yeah. one year. Mm -hmm. One year, an ROI of 100%. What other investment can you put into? You can't, you can't do that as stocks. If I go buy- right. $2,000 worth of, you know, have I buy $20,000 of stocks and it increases by 10%. That's 200 bucks or sorry, $2,000. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we need, from an investment we need to shift, it doesn't make sense. We need to shift gears. We need to shift the, yeah, shift the narrative. And Katie, just back to it. I think we can all acknowledge it's been a tough year. It has been well, difficult. Absolutely. My point my point was, I don't like it when people come in for the good times and then leave. And oh, then, and yeah. then that's, that's the whole thing Great. is if you're going to be a professional, be a professional, stick with it. And this is the time to up our game and hone our, our, um, you know, whatever we're good at and what we need to get better at. So we don't need to be perfect at anything. No. Don't try and be perfect. Start and just do it. Do and it. then we get better, better and better. So yeah. Fundamentals absolutely. get better by practice, practice, practice. If you, if you're, like if you're stumbling, like look, what's up? Enjoy the suck, because you're gonna suck at it. If you haven't yeah. made consistent calls to your database, you're like, you know, I don't know. Maybe we can figure out a way for people to put stuff on your Facebook page of like, oh, I did this, and it was like the dumbest thing you did in making your calls, right? And like just for entertainment factor, because we all do it. We all make really like dumb or get an objection that's stops is cold and it's like and then you hang up and you're like oh i had such a good comeback for that but it's over now right so i mean it, it, embrace the suck because suck at it for a while because at some point you won't anymore right okay so i had there were two women in my life that really shaped me and one of them um passed away this last year and if i used the s word she would be all over me Oh my God, she hated it so much. So just, that was so funny because I do say it, but I always think of her when I do. Um, so, all right. So Catherine says, I'm a CPA. Remember itemized deductions will become deductible again on 1-1-26 when the tax law expires for the standard deduction and the cap of $10,000 on all state taxes. So, wow, will folks need a mortgage interest and property tax write off so they will all need homes in the next two years. That's Catherine, huge. thank you. That thank you. Huge. I didn't even remember that. Actually, read that oh, again. Audrey, read that again. Okay. Because that's huge. I would love to. Thank you. Okay. Again, this is not me. This is from Catherine. I'm a CPA. Itemized deductions will become deductible again on 1126 when the tax law expires for the standard deduction and the cap of $10,000 in all state taxes. So, wow. Well, folks need a mortgage, interest, and property tax write off. So they will all need homes in the next two years. So that gives us two years to get people into a position where they don't just lose their standard deduction and then they have no write-offs and yeah. hallelujah. And please God, I, let I was, that expire. I was doing my taxes just, you know, of course I, I went to the October 15th deadline. Yeah, at midnight on the 15th. <laughs> I was so hot, so far over that $10,000 in, in state taxes. It was like, wow, what a waste. Everyone here is crazy. And it's not just in California anymore, because as prices have gone up around the country, 
I mean, this is an issue in other states that don't have something like Prop 13, where if your property just appreciated 30% in the last three years, guess what? Your property taxes just went way up. Yep. And while yep. we're at it, you also didn't have the limits on the amount your your homeowner's insurance could go up. So that just went up through the roof as well. Roof, roof, as well. So the people have had humongous increases in their expenses. And thank God we're not in Europe where everybody has adjustable mortgages so that when the EU and Britain started raising their version of the Fed funds rate, their mortgages, the interest on that and all those payments went through the roof too. So it's we're lucky that we have had it as good as we've had it. But boy, I will not be sad to see those uh, deductions expire. I didn't realize that was... January, 2026. So thank you, Catherine, for that. My God, thanks people. And this guys is what you get when you are in community with other people. That's, I, we had our friend, Terry Buckman, who said that that our show is like the water cooler at work where you get together, you have a little conversation and you get to share ideas. You learn something you knew, you pass it along. Um, I have a friend, well, our friend, Jason, who does our YouTube channel. He was at a realtor conference and he heard some girl who, or woman, who was stating exactly what he has said. He's heard us say a million times, like I'm always talking about the Cal Hapa thing, right? So there was a conversation about that. He hears her say exactly what he's heard me say. And he said, and later he goes, where'd you hear that? She heard it on our show. Holy guacamole. What, so what, what, you we have, have to- She listens? Okay, okay. We, you know, we have to be around other people. We have to share with other people and learn and- be a student and be curious, be curious about what is new, what is happening in our industry because it impacts us. And so when your borrower says, oh my gosh, I'm not going to have to pay buyers. I'm not going to, you know, we're not going to have to pay realtors anymore. Look what just happened. You better have some, something to say about that. And for your realtors who are not plugged in, talk to them too, because Okay, are commissions going to go away? Of course not. What's going to happen? There's, you know what I mean? Same Being thing happened a to resource. us. What? The same thing that happened to us. The commissions actually went up when they. Yeah, exactly. Them. Exactly. Um, okay, so Jeff said I did gain some good nuggets that I can put into play today. Thank you. So, Katie, thank you very, very, very much. Oh. We appreciate it. Is there anything you'd like to wrap up with? Um, well, I continue to talk about these things on all my social media platforms. It's Coach Katie, and it's spelled K-A-T-E-Y. Um, so I let me put that in. So Coach Thanks Katie, that's pretty much everything. Um, yeah, just so, like it is on your hat. That's on exactly. My hat, yes. Um, so Coach Katie on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, um, all the things. Uh, and um, if uh, you, I can send you uh, if you. I don't know where I send this out. When you send out the recording, I can send you the link for if you want to sign up for my weekly newsletter. I do a weekly newsletter with a video. And um, I think, yeah, just you guys master the fundamentals. The things that you all put in there that you know work, double down, sometimes yeah, triple down. Exactly. But just get be masterful at this. Be masterful, masterful, masterful. And I know you're going to, and, and this, is, this is the market where the professionals rise to the top. This, and I, I to be like, this is a good time to get into real estate. I'm like, yeah, you're successful in this market. Any market after this, yep. a piece of cake. Uh, so exactly. develop those systems, those skills, and just get better and better and better because it, it, it will serve you well, not only for this year and into next year, but for the next decade or two. Absolutely. And there are a couple of thank yous in the chat. So thanks guys. Um, and also a follow-up note from Catherine who said, by the way, 2022 taxes can still be e-filed and paid as late as 11, 16, 23 for both IRS and California was last minute change um, on 11, 16 by both the IRS and California. California didn't bother announcing their, ch their uh, change to that until like eight o'clock at night on the, it was so dumb. I couldn't believe it. Um, but anyway, so if your clients are slackers and they didn't get their taxes filed, they're not going to be penalized for the rest of us who killed ourselves to get them done. Oh, well. And, uh, Jill said, thank you, Katie. I always love your ideas. I get, um, I get my emails. So yeah, you can be on Katie's distribution list. All right. Well, we will look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time and get your NMLS done again. The discount code with mortgage educators is countdown 
And it is a countdown now, guys. You don't want to get one left. reason why yep. people don't renew early is they forget one state or two that they're licensed in. So go check or if they're you've got all those slacker. states covered. Ah, not yeah, slacker. that's true. Yeah, if you haven't gotten all your states done, you do need to get that done. And we'll do, I have a little clarification from our conversation with this um, about some of the CFPB stuff from last week. So I'll cover that next week. And with that, kids, have a wonderful week. We really appreciate yeah, you, Katie. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you.